Amen, amen. Welcome everybody to the Hand of God ministry today. My name is Pastor Jesse. If you don't already know, today's message is going to be a good one. Amen. With everything that's happening in our earth today, I've been waiting for the opportunity when God would release me to minister something about all the chaos in politics happening today. Amen? Because if you know, the pulpit is not for politics. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not a democracy in here. Nope. That means no one gets a vote, a vote in here. You know that, right? You can pray, but you don't get a vote on how the church operates. Amen. The only one that's leading this ministry is the guardian and the shepherd, the great shepherd of our souls, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we allow the Holy Ghost to come in and to lead and to guide us into all truth. And to bring everything back to remembrance that we've learned. Now, the country is run in a different way. Amen? Amen. There is democracy. In the church is theocracy. So how do we you know, determine the Christian? What is he supposed to do in all of this that's happening? What are your responsibilities as a believer? As a Christian? woman or man in the earth. Today's title of the message is The Four Duties of Citizens. Amen. The Four Duties of Citizens. Amen? Amen. We're not talking about your responsibility as a Christian to the Lord. I'm talking about your responsibility in the earth as a citizen in the United States of America. Now can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Hallelujah. I want to go over and I want to share today your responsibilities to the government. What is the Christian supposed to do? You see everybody out there doing this and doing that. Rising up and creating a lot of tension. What is the Christian's responsibility? What are they supposed to do? How are we supposed to respond with everything around us? And we're going to go into the Word of God. And we're going to have the Word of God be our guide. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's no better way than Scripture to guide us. In this life. And today's message is going to surround what it is that the Christians is supposed to do concerning government in the earth. Amen. 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 So let's turn to Romans 13. What does it mean to be a Christian citizen in the earth? How do we respond to the government as Christians? Hallelujah. There's going to be four duties concerning the Christian's relationship to the government that we're going to study today. So everybody turn with me to Romans chapter 13. Are you excited? Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 13. Romans 13. Are we there? Now if you're taking uh, notes, number one is this. Submit to the governing authorities. Number one, submit to the governing authorities. Let's read. It says in verse, uh, chapter uh, 13, verse 1, on the heading it says what? Respect. respect for authority. I tell you right there, I can just preach on respect for authority, amen? <laughs> because it's null and void in the land right now. And we're going to get to some of the reasons why the respect for authority is starting to diminish in the earth, amen? amen. It says everyone. Did it say Someone. It said everyone must submit to governing authorities. That means you. That means me. It doesn't matter what's your background. It doesn't matter the color of skin you are. Christian, listen to me. Every, everybody look up here. Everyone. The believer as well as the non-believer. And the reason that Apostle Paul wrote this to the Romans, because Apostle Paul is the author of the book of Romans. Amen? Amen? And the reason he wrote this to the Romans is because Christianity is setting a blaze right now. And here the disciples have already established a few churches. And they're still in the earth and under the Roman Empire. And so Apostle Paul is bringing in much needed wisdom into the Roman citizenship as well as being a Christian. Christians were rising up. And they said, we're in the church now. We don't have to follow all the laws of the land now because we're under God. And so Apostle Paul said, wait a minute here. Apostle Paul, so much wisdom. 
You can get so far on this side of spirituality that you get unbalanced. Amen. Amen? The Word of God grounds the Christian that he continues to walk in wisdom so that everything he does is pleasing, that we may find favor with both God and man. Hallelujah? Amen. So this scripture is talking to everyone must submit to the governing authorities. And who are the governing authorities? That's anybody to the president, to whoever's in charge, amen, to your police officers, everybody that's in authority that we're supposed to what? Submit. Submit. Submit means a voluntary giving up of yourself. You volunteer. You volunteer your will by submitting to the things in the earth. Amen. I just don't agree, and I don't agree, and I don't agree, and I don't agree. Let's we'll see what else the scriptures tell us for you that don't agree. This is, my, this is not my word, I promise you. Verse 1. Everyone, everyone must submit to the governing authorities. Listen to this. For all authority comes from the president. No. I didn't say that in there. For all authority comes from man. No. All authority comes from who? Let's all say it together as a church. God. Comes from God. Amen. And those in position of authority have been placed there by who? By God. 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 Y'all read the Bible at all? Did you know Romans 13 was in there? Amen. <laughs> tells you everything you need to know as a citizen and how you're to conduct yourself when it comes to the governing authorities that you can be at peace that no matter who's in charge that God has placed them there for us to prosper and to go forth in what we need to do in the earth. Yeah. So we know we don't need to concern ourselves and walk around depressed and broken, amen, and all sad because who's in charge? Amen. Because ultimately it says there that God has placed them there. Amen. 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 Now, we do have some effect on who's placed there as Christians. And this is in Scripture, but this is my own personal belief, is that I believe Christians pray this man into where he's at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't get a whole lot of amens there, but that's all right. <laughs> amen. Hey, he's, he's still there, right? Amen. Now, now, the thing is, I heard my uh, Pastor Jacob, he's, a, he's my brother, he's a young, my younger brother, he's in San Antonio. I heard him say something so powerful before uh, Donald Trump was in presidency. He says, for you Christians that, that are protesting and, and, and that are bad-mouthing and that are on Facebook just running your rants and, and all these political rants you're running with, he says, you're going to be slapped in the face because the Christian has to pray for whoever's in authority. <laughs> so if Hillary had gotten in president, guess what? I'd be praying for her too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that for some of you to release some pressure? Amen. Right? Amen. Come on, this is not our home. Amen. I tell you every day when you come to church, we're just passing through. Uh -huh. Amen. This is a sewer compared to heaven Amen. that we're living in. Amen? Amen? What do you think makes the earth tolerable? Us. 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 Amen. Amen. Well, we should be making it tolerable. Huh? <laughs> we are the salt of the earth. We Christians are what makes the earth taste Amen. good. Amen. When they see us, they, they should say, God, there's still hope in the earth. Amen. 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 She should be walking around like a fruit basket. <laughs> I mean, just walking around. Fruit is just falling off your tree. Amen? Amen. Boy, just love, peace, and patience, and kindness. When you walk into a room, peace should automatically be still. Woo. Yes. Woo. Come on. Amen. Man. That's the power and the Holy Ghost that, that, that goes with the Christian. Amen. Not just showing up at church. Amen? Yes. And, and, and showing up for appearance sakes and clocking in and saying, I made my Sunday, and that's it. <laughs> we go a lot further than just showing up on Sunday. Hallelujah. Right. We do it because the scriptures tell us, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves as we gather together so that what? We can study the scriptures together and be edified. Amen. For faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. <laughs> but we're just we're just getting to the just the tip of this right now. Amen. Amen. Let's read verse 2. So anyone, I like that word anyone now again. It said anyone. It didn't say just certain people. It says, so anyone who rebels against authority 
is rebelling against what God has instituted. And it says they will what? Be punished. That is God's ordinance in the earth. That is how God has instituted the government in the earth. Hallelujah. He has set it up. And if we rebel, if we decide to cause an upset, we cause disruption, dissension, division, separation. As a Christian, get ready. I told you last Sunday, we, for some reason, the Christian seems to get dealt with a little quicker than the lost. <laughs> Did you ever think about that? The lost just carries on because they're lost. They don't have a daddy. Amen? <laughs> we have a father who in heaven says, I chastise every child that belongs to me so that we can live what? A holy life. A right life. It seems when we start to go off the trail a little bit and rebel against something, we get dealt with a lot quicker. Amen? Amen. Why? Because we belong to the master. Isn't it good to have a, fa a good father Amen. that brings the rules and the discipline into our life to keep us living right for him and living holy for him? That's why we don't reject or we don't harden our hearts when he begins to correct and chastise us. Because when we chastise us, he loves. Woo! I've been chastised many a times because he loves me. My Father in Heaven loves me, amen? Didn't want me to be condemned with the rest of the world. That's why He corrects. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why He chastises, so that He can bring you in line. Some a little harder than others. Amen. Go with me to Titus. Hold your, hold your place there and go over with me to Titus chapter 3. Y'all enjoying this so far? Amen. We're just getting started. Oh boy, it's going to be good. All the T's, Thessalonians, 2 Timothy, Titus. Titus chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 1 and 2. Number 1, I said, was submit to the governing authorities. Amen? Amen. The one who decides and puts them there is who? God Himself. So we can be at peace now. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this in verse uh, 1. Are we there? Titus chapter 3. He says, remind the believers, am I doing that today as your pastor? Yes. Come on now. Remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient. Always ready to do what? To go and stand and do wrong? No, to do what is good. Verse 2. They must not what? Slander anyone. They must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. That is the Christian. That is the believer. That is his walk encompassed right there that we're not to go and we're not to set up yeah, yeah, watch this y'all gonna love this everybody look up here how many knows is a demonstration it's called what? hyperbole so Christians don't get to do this not to protest. We're not to stir these kind of things up. Right. Let's read it again. Amen. Go with me to verse 1. Now if you've done that and you're just barely finding some understanding and wisdom in the scriptures then don't beat yourself up. Just don't do it again. Amen? Amen. It says in verse 1, remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient. Always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone. How many know that slandering, that's pushing your agenda, we're to pray, we're not to go out and protest, we're not to go out and stand for something, even though you feel in your heart it's righteous and the right thing, it's not for the Christian. Amen? Yeah. It says they must not slander anyone, must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Yeah. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Y'all enjoying this? Yes. Hope I'm not taking some of your Santa Claus away today. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get you to live just a good and peaceful life and not have to worry about all the crazies that are rising up right now. Amen. Because you know what that does, that protesting? It causes a, a sort of revolution, militant type of fight back spirit in the Christian's life. 
And you have to be careful to guard against that. How are you going to show love? The one thing that men and women need in the earth isn't you to go and protest, but they need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The way we handle it as the salt and light of the earth is we go from the inside out through the salvation of their soul. We're not to get caught up with everybody's agenda and what they feel is right and wrong. We're just to submit. That's the Christian's job. You realize you submit through your entire life? First you submit to God and His Word. Then for you married people, you submit to your wife. No, you submit to one another. Amen? <laughs> and you submit to each other in the church. And then you submit to the governing authority. Your whole life is a life of submission. Amen. And you can only do it through the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. to truly, truly submit. Amen. Now look up, everybody look up here. Why the protesting? Why all the... The, the ruckus that's happening in the land. Because our nation, the ones that didn't vote that way, are walking fearful. And I can tell you why. Because there's a whole lot of structure that's fixing to come into the land. <laughs> and when structure comes in, when change comes in anywhere, there's a resistance to that change. Amen. And it's called anarchy. I don't want the rules. I like the way things are. I like the freedom we have that I can do and say and be and act however I want and no repercussions whatsoever. Amen. God's tired of it. Amen. I believe true Christians are too. Amen? Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Are we there? It says, make it your goal to live what? A quiet life. <laughs> Woo! That means minding your what? Your own oh, business. Yes. What? <laughs> it's in Scripture. I told you I'd get you. <laughs> and, and working with your what? Oh, hands. Yeah. Not your mouth. Your hands. <laughs> Just as we instructed you before. That is the Christians. Everything right there. I hear me about the Holy Ghost, okay? <laughs> Christians. Living a quiet life. Minding your own business. Not meddling in the affairs of others. And being a busybody. That's why he says right afterwards, working with your own... I'm talking about being a good citizen. Amen? Four duties of citizens. This is part of it. It says when you're busy working with your hands, then this isn't working so much. Amen. That's why he tells you to mind your own business, be, live a quiet life, and work with your what? Your hands. It's good for the Christian to work. 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 Can I say it again? Yes. When you get up in the morning and that clock goes off and your alarm goes off, I want you to know that you're fulfilling God's will in your life by going to work. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that one who doesn't work, don't eat. Amen. Worse than an infidel. That's bad. That is real bad. You should feel good that you can get up in the morning and go to work and know that you're being a good citizen and it's going to flow into some other things as you being a Christian worker, minding his own business, living a quiet life, and working with his own hands, not meddling in the affairs of others, not being a busybody, not gossiping, not Amen. running this all the time, not going to your work and trying to set up Jesus at your workplace Amen. with your billboard and your little cubie, you know, whatever you have right there. <laughs> you did a work. You did a work. You did a work, amen. amen. I tell you, we learned this a long time ago because we belong to a tough and a good ministry that fed us a lot of wisdom. Because I was way out there before I got to some wisdom. <laughs> and I would preach to a tree and offend everyone around me, but I was suffering for the gospel. <laughs> that persecution was by my own hands, amen. When persecution rises up for the Christian, most of the time you don't have to say anything. Just because of what you stand for. Amen. Just because you stand for a holy life. You will be persecuted. That is not the place to go. I'm talking to somebody here. Amen? amen. The Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody. That's not the time to go and get people straight. You be sensitive. You be ready for when someone asks about your faith. The Bible says be ready to give them an answer. Hallelujah. But wait till you ask. Amen. <laughs> everybody, man, Christians especially, they want to straighten everybody out. It's just so much. It's, it's, it's a lot of stress. Walk out your own salvation with trembling and fear. Amen? 
if God appoints you, then that's a whole different sermon. Hallelujah. Then we're talking about ministry and discipleship and whatnot. I'm talking about being a good what? Citizen. Citizen. We have too many Christians running off the rails. We do. Passing out tracts and turning up their job into a ministry. That is not the place to be doing it because there's people around. Amen. You're so brave. Go out to the mall and try it. Boy, I love it. Y'all are just, y'all are getting it. I can feel y'all getting it. Number two. We, 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 we said number one, submit. Number two, respect people in authority. Go back to Romans 13. Now, you know, if you don't submit, you're not going to respect. If you don't submit, you're not going to respect. Where does it start first? It starts in the home. It's not up to teachers to teach your children submission and respect. That comes from the home. Hallelujah. Number two, respect people in authority. Let's read verse three. Are you with me? This is going to set some of you free today. It says, for the authorities, listen to this, do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right and they will what? Honor you. Amen. The authorities are God's servants. The authorities are God's servants. Now here it's talking about back then it was magistrates. And if you have a King James, it probably says magistrates. Hallelujah. This is just a breakdown. It says officers. It could be anybody in authority. When you're driving for conscience sake, you want to live by the laws of the land and abide by the laws of the land so that you can drive and go and live without fear. Amen. I didn't always live my life that way. And just because you got away with something doesn't mean that the fear is not there. Of getting caught later. That's a horrible way to live. Always looking over your shoulder. Are you with me? Hmm. I know. Y'all know what I'm talking about when you hear that. Woo! Siren go off. Your heart comes out of your shoulder, out of your chest. And you haven't done anything. I already know the, 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 the procedure. And all of you should get a hold of this as you put your hands up on that wheel quick. <laughs> I wasn't always a pastor, amen? I wasn't always a, a, God, a man of God, hallelujah. But I knew in that, whew, don't be moving around in that. So many people don't respect and understand how to respect the authority that's in the land. And so many things are happening. But you got to know, even, I want you to hear me about the Holy Ghost. Well, they just don't live right. They don't live right. Do they uphold the law? They don't live right. Uh, they don't follow the Constitution the way they should. They don't live right. But they do follow the Constitution. Mm, listen to me, listen to me. They're, they're sleeping around, but yet they're upholding the laws of the land still. We're talking about how to be a citizen, amen, of the earth. Apostle Paul said, follow what they, they tell you, but don't do what they do. Amen. 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 We need someone who's going to uphold the things that we believe in. Amen. And not to look so closely at their life that it disproves who they are in that office. We're not respecting, uh, now listen to me, we respect the office that they are in. We respect the office that the man of God is in. Because God has ordained and put the man of God there. So we respect the man of whoever it may be. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Is, is, that good? is that okay to say that? Is that yes. too much? No. Submit and respect. If you submit to all authority, and don't think that there's been an injustice done to you. Because if one does it, then all of them are disproved in your eyes. It doesn't work that way. Amen. We still live in this earth. And there's going to be good and there's going to be evil. But for the most part, God has put in an, a government instituted in the earth for our good. Amen. To keep everything from going into chaos. So that we can live. And this is the best country in the world. Yes. Amen. Can, can, amen. You give me, can I get an amen? Amen. Come on. That's, boy, I tell you. So we're going to get into a little more of this. Just keep, keep with, stay with me. In verse 4 it says, The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But, I love that. There's a little conjunction. <laughs> but if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid. <laughs> for they have the power to punish you. They do. They are God's servants for the very purpose 
of punishing those who do what is wrong. Verse 5. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to, to, also to keep what? A clear conscience. Does anybody have a clear conscience today? I do. That means I haven't done something, even though you got away with it. Your conscience as a Christian will not let you get away with it. It's going to bother you. It's going to bother you. Amen? That's why you take care of all the duties as a citizen by doing the things you know to do in the earth, obeying the laws of the land, submitting to the governing authorities, respect those who are in authority because it's all been set up by God. Amen. If you're here today and you've had something done to you that was wrong, remember, the arm of flesh will fail you. It's still set up by God Himself though. We're still on this earth. Amen. we got to have some kind of government. This is not the by and by. There's some hiccups in the earth. Why? Because of sin. That's where the Christian comes in. Got to get Jesus in the hearts of men. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Y'all enjoying this morning? Yeah. I hope it's helping some of you guys. That way you don't have to be on Facebook no more and answering everybody. <laughs> just, let them, just let them rant. Let them do all their ranting. And, and, and you can just sit back and be at peace. It's a, the scripture says I need to mind my business. Be at peace. 1 Peter chapter 2, 13 through 17. And you know, this is we've already heard from Apostle Paul. Amen? Now we're going to hear from Peter. We heard from the book of Titus. The book of Titus was, was written by Apostle Paul. It was a letter written to Titus. And we've already heard several times now to respect those who are in authority. So let's hear what uh, Peter has to say. He says, For the Lord's sake, respect all human authority. Rather the king, I want you to replace king with president, as head of the state, head of the country. Isn't this beautiful? Y'all yeah, didn't know that was in there either, did y'all? Are the officials he has appointed, for the king has sent them, to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. Woo! I love it. It's God's will, listen to this, that your honorable lives should, should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. Stop there. Your honorable lives. I'm an upright citizen in the earth. You know what that does? As a Christian believer, it makes the gospel attractive. It makes God attractive when the Christian believer is walking and abiding by the laws of the land. His honorable life will silence those who are lost and outside of the body of Christ. They will see your good life. That man's not on the couch living off of mom and dad. They're out there making a living. They're out there supporting their family. They're out there being a father to their child. Amen? Amen. They're not out there trying to do this or that or backdoor or, or backbiting or, or trying to do to, 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 to shady business of any types, but up abiding citizens, upright citizens. Amen. 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 It makes the gospel attractive and it silences them because you're living an honorable life. Hallelujah. Fitting into the scriptures. Amen. I tell you what's going on with Christianity right now. Everybody wants to rise up and be behind the pulpit. Everybody wants to be in leadership. Everybody wants to give a message. Everybody wants to go preach. Everyone wants to go save. Everyone wants to go lay hands on someone. Go evangelize and go witness. Who wants to be a father to that child? To be a good husband. To be a good provider. To be a good father. To be a good worker in the earth. Pay your taxes. That's a what? What? That's not, that's not Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> Have more respect for the man or woman who does these things and goes off and, and is flying off everywhere trying to get everybody straight. And his whole life is a mess. Amen. Said, Come on now. Amen. The Bible says if you can't rule your own house, you cannot rule the house of God. Amen. You got to be someone who's got to rule your house well. Getting a job. Having some, you know, some, some, some goals set for yourself. In this life. Amen. We're not in the by and by yet. <laughs> you got to continue to work. Hallelujah. Is that, is that good? Yes. Hallelujah. I know this is tough for you guys, but we need it. There's a lot of stuff going on in the earth right, going on in the earth right now. 
Verse 16. It says, for you, listen to this, for you are free. Talking to the Christian. Yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God and respect the president. I love that. Go back with me to 16. It says, for you are free. Christian, you are free. Christian, look up. You are free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What kind of freedom are we talking about? The blood of Jesus. I love how Peter just writes all of this in concerning our duties as a citizen. And then he tells you, you've been set free by the blood of Jesus. The blood has washed your conscience clean. Now that you've been free, don't use that freedom because guilt no longer plagues your life to go out and indulge in sin. Don't go out and commit all kinds of crimes. He's saying use that freedom that God has eluded you, has given you to serve Him. Amen. Come on now, isn't that good? Amen. But a lot of times we get set free and we don't realize the guilt is gone and we slip back into our old ways of doing things. Use that freedom to serve God. To serve one another. Live an honorable life. An upright citizen. Abiding by the laws of the land. I'm excited about it. Amen. Respect everyone. Love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God first and then respect the King. Go back to Romans chapter 13. Number one. Submit to the governing authorities. Number two, respect people in authority. Number three, y'all are going to love number three if you're writing it down. Pay your taxes. <laughs> Brother Jesse, get the door. <laughs> Look, if you work for the, you know, if you work and you get a pay stub, you're going to have a little percentage there that says taxes, amen? amen. So you're paying taxes whether you like it or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love the fact that our new president is trying to get that down. For those who don't pay taxes, well, they really don't care. <laughs> Amen. But I pay taxes. Amen. Do you pay taxes? <laughs> it sounds good to me. Amen. Because the Bible says we have to pay taxes. So, of course, I get excited when they say, I want to lower the taxes. <laughs> it's okay to say those things. It's nothing to do with politics. It's in the Bible. Amen. The Bible says pay your taxes. Amen. Why? Oh. You know, we're Christians. We want to know. Pay your taxes. Romans 13, 6 and 7. Let's read. What does it say? Pay your taxes. <laughs> Verse 6 says, pay your taxes too. For these same reasons. Why? He's telling you the reason why. For government workers need to be paid. Who are government workers? Our military. Those are government workers. Amen. We pay taxes. Why? Don't get caught up with all the you know, taxes I pay because of the underprivileged. And... No, don't get, don't get caught up with all that. Amen? Well, I pay over taxes and that feeds the poor. And, you know, they don't want to work. So my tax... Don't get, in, don't get caught up with all of that. Amen. Because God keeps a good set of books. Amen. He does. And he's going to bless you for doing what you as the Christian need to do. You're not just relying on mom and dad to do it. You young people need to rise up because there is a rebellion in the land that doesn't want structure. And that's why we're in the mess today. Amen. Because there has been no structure. Hallelujah. Amen. But the church is always, always, always going to be a light in the earth. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Pay your taxes. Let's, let's keep reading. <laughs> For government workers need to be paid so they can continue to do what they're doing. They are what? Serving God, God in what they do. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> you mean the military is serving God in what they do? Did you not read the Old Testament? All of the military that was in the king's army? I don't uh, belong. I don't, go, I don't believe in the military and we don't give blood because, you know, my blood. <clears throat> Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's religion. Amen? Amen. It says it right there. Pay your taxes. Pay your taxes because it supports the government that we have so much freedom that we're able to enjoy. You know what? You don't want to bend your knee? Get out of the country. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Where else are you going to go and make a million dollars throwing some pigskin around? Yeah. <laughs> ah, I went there, didn't I? It's a little jab. Did y'all feel it? 
<laughs> wow, that's good. Pastor's in rare form today. Let's keep, let's keep reading because this is just good stuff. This is scripture. I'm not trying to say something that's not written down here. It says in verse 7, Give to everyone what you what? Owe them. Hallelujah. He says, Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in what? Authority. I love that. Okay, pay your taxes. Go with me to Matthew 22. Let's hear what Jesus said. Y'all know where I'm going. Some of y'all scholars already know where I'm going. Y'all dis disciples in the Word, y'all know exactly where I'm going. Matthew 22, 21. And this is Jesus talking now. Amen? Because they were trying... You know, taxes were still there. No new thing. Taxes was in Caesar's time in the Roman Empire. It's no new thing that we're doing in, in this particular uh, part of Jesus' ministry. They were trying to trip him up. And they were trying to see who he paid taxes to. And so let's, let's read what happened to Christ. He says in verse... Uh, let's go to verse... Let's start, let's start in verse 17 and we'll run down. It says, now tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He's, he's challenging Jesus. You Christians, is it right to pay taxes to our country or not? Let's keep reading. He says, but Jesus knew their evil motives. You hypocrites, he said. Why are you trying to trap me? Here, show me the coin used for the tax. Mm -hmm. Woo! He says, when they handed him the Roman coin, which was a denaro, he asked, whose picture and title are stamped on it? George Washington, amen? Yeah. At the time, it's not George Washington, but you know what I'm saying. Caesar's, they replied. Well then, he said, I love this. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. And his reply amazed them. They were amazed. Why? Right there, he separated us as Christians having a dual citizenship in the earth. Ooh, we have a citizenship in heaven. But we also have a citizenship in the earth. Hallelujah. We give while we're here in the earth what is due. Pay our taxes. Give to Uncle Sam. Even though he takes a little more than he should. It's okay. You can, you can, you can feel that way. Amen. You can feel that way. I feel that way. We feel that way. But you still to do it. He's saying, hey, look here, Jesus, I'm not rebelling. I'm not causing an uprise. I'm not even trying to create a revolution here against the Roman Empire. You still do what the earth requires of you, Christian, in the earth. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. It's good stuff. <laughs> I can just see like the steak hanging out. It's good stuff right there. It's going to free you up. Amen. But it's also going to cause you to rise up and get your life going. Amen. Amen. You're not in God's will every day out there in the streets ministering. Oh, what? What? It's a part of it. It's a part of it. Hallelujah. You're not the disciples of... Come on now. you got to remember that the disciples that walked with Jesus, they walked with Him for how long? Three and a half years. In Jesus' ministry under the teaching and guidance of Jesus Himself as a true disciple yielding their lives to Christ until they went out and ministered. Amen. Amen? we got to learn to come into this kind of ministry and just sit for a while and learn. Why? Learn to submit. you got to learn to submit first. It's still the same in the church. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We just carry it out in the, in the earth. For us Christians, it should be, it should be easier. Because we're used to this kind of life in our walk with God. Amen. We come in here, we submit to the authority God has placed, which is who? This government is a different government that we abide by. It's the five government, the government of the church, the five-fold ministry. Apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let's, get there. Let's go. Let's keep going. <laughs> submit, respect, pay your taxes. We're talking about how the four duties of citizens are for the, the man or woman of God in the earth. Number four. Pray for those in authority. What? There it is. What else did get you? What is the Christian's uh, take? What are they supposed to do for those in leadership and authority over you? We pray. We pray. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are in leadership. Amen. First, for those in the ministry that are over you, us as your pastor, pray for us. Pray. Pray that these doors stay open. Hallelujah. Pray that those don't pay their tithes. Pay their tithes. 
<laughs> That's another little jab. Y'all feel that jab? It's the Holy Ghost jabbing you today. Just doing some jabbing. Trying to get you guys blessed in here, amen? First Timothy chapter 2. We're going to finish up here. We've got one more scripture after First Timothy and we'll, we'll close. Number four, pray for those in authority. Now we're going to hear what Apostle Paul told Timothy. All the duties of being a citizen in the earth. Amen? Pray for those in authority. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Listen to this. This is great. Y'all there? It says, I urge you. First of all, pray for all people. Ask God to what? Help them. We pray for our president. On Wednesday, we prayed for our president as a body of believers in the church. Pastor Delisa led us. It was a beautiful service. It was an amazing service. Amen. We prayed. Yes. We've already visited a few churches. And we've already stood praying for our president to give him wisdom, yes. give him knowledge, give him understanding so he governs the people properly. Remember, when the righteous king is in leadership, the people prosper. Woo! Yes. When the wicked king, the people suffer. God knew what he was doing. Yo, hold your place there. I'm going to read something out. Go with me to Daniel chapter 2 real quick. The book of Daniel. The Lord just put that script. It's not part of my sermon, but I want you to go to the book of Daniel. Can you give me a little more, a few minutes here? Amen. 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 The book of Daniel. Now, if you want to know where Daniel is, Ezekiel and the book of Daniel. Ezekiel is pretty long book, so you should be able to find the book of Daniel right after Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 2. Y'all going to love this. I'm sorry. Daniel chapter 2. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Go ahead, Sister Isabel. Daniel chapter 2. Now I want you to start in verse 20. Verse 20. When y'all get there, just let me know. Just say amen. 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 Now let me know you're there. That's okay. He'll be all right. She's going to take care of it. It says, he said, praise the name of God forever and ever. For he has all wisdom and power. We're talking about God. Verse 21 is where I want y'all to see. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. Woo-hoo-hoo. Hallelujah. Did y'all get that? God is the one that sets up kings, and He's the one that also removes kings. God is the one who ordains and orchestrates these kind of world events that happen in our earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Now go back with 1 Timothy, and we're going to finish off there. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I just thought that was important so you know that everything that's ordained is ordained by God Himself. All things work together for good. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Pray this way for kings, for presidents, and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceable, peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Verse 3. This is good and pleases God our Savior. So what are we supposed to do, Christian? Pray. Pray. Pray for those who are in leadership so we can live a peaceful life in the earth. We still continue to exercise our freedom as Christians in this great country because of the laws that we abide by. In other parts of the country, they're not so blessed to be able to exercise Christianity and their freedom like we are here today. Amen. And if there was any chance of that being stopped, God intervened because it's not our time to go through that kind of oppression just yet. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Come on now. We're still in the earth. Holy Ghost is still here. Amen. We haven't been removed yet. The church hasn't been removed yet. Hallelujah. It's not his time yet, the Hallelujah. devil. Come on now. Now you can go ahead and close your Bibles. I'm going to read this in closing. Listen to this, uh, saints. Christians are rapidly moving in the direction. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about the lost or the unbelieving. Christians are rapidly moving in the direction of opposing government more than submitting to it and serving it with a pure heart and a clear conscience. We have lost our respect for those in authority. 
and those in public office. We've come to view government as evil rather than God's divine ordained instrument in the earth. Romans 12, 18 in closing says, Do all that you can to live at peace with everyone. Stand. Do all that you can, Christian, as much as it's up to you to live at peace with everyone. Number one, submit to the governing authorities. Number two, respect people in authority. Number three, pay your taxes. Number four, pray for those in authority. I want to challenge you. So I'm going to release a blessing over you. I want to challenge you as a Christian and as your pastor. If you fall into any of these areas and you're saying, God, I know I need to start doing this. Lord, I know I need to start doing that. Then I want to challenge you this week to abide by those convictions and begin to move in the direction that the Holy Ghost is moving you towards in, in His Word. Amen? Amen.